Hi there, Richard Brook here of Creative Wellness. So I'm going to tell you in as little time as possible how your mind works. It's just a little bit about my background, so I'm an acupuncturist and yoga teacher, holistic expert. And so I work a lot using Chinese medicine theory, which I can fuse together into a large amounts of meditation I've done in my life, which allows me to put together a nice simplistic system for understanding how your mind works. So the first thing we're going to do is look at some of the different patterns that the mind makes. So essentially, your mind moves between your external and internal senses. So your mind moves between sight, sound, taste, touch and smell, and then signals that you experience within your own body. So if you could tape record the contents of your own mind for five minutes, two minutes, one minute, you would see that your mind moves, like I said, between sight, sound, taste, touch and smell, your external senses, and then signals that you hear from inside the body, which create other thoughts, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. So as you're sitting there in one moment, you might be hearing the sounds around you, and then you might be feeling, oh, I've got a little pain in my lower back, I'm feeling hungry, I can feel my lungs inflating and deflating, and then next thing you know, your senses are back out again in what's around you. Now, the reason your mind undulates between the interior and the exterior is because your mind follows your body and your body follows nature. So what we often forget about in our modern world, where we're quite separate from nature around us, is that your body by design is actually part of the natural matrix of life, which has got patterns to it. So this is where Chinese medicine makes things a lot more simplistic than often what Western medicine does. Is we've got these nice, easy to understand patterns that happen. So if you think of nature for a moment, nature is full of what we think of as yin and yang. So across nature, you've got this sense of expansion and contraction that's happening everywhere. So if you think about the planet as a whole for a moment, you've got the sunlight, which is a very yang force, shining down on half the planet at any one time which creates life and animation in that part of the planet, whilst the rest of the planet sits in darkness and things go inside to rest. So we can obviously see that across the course of 24 hours with ourself, that we move between animated phases where we're alert and awake during the day, and then during the night we move inside ourselves and we rest. We can see it across the course of a year, between the deepest point of winter and then the summer solstice, this increase in light creates this outward movement. And then between the highest point of summer and then the winter solstice, we move into this state of decline where things start to decay, to regenerate and renew to head back out again. So these phases of yin and yang are everywhere in nature. And because we're part of nature, our body also subscribes to and works on that same principle. So we move between our outer and the inner. And the reason why that also affects the mind is because the mind connects into the functions of the body. So in the next stage of what we're going to talk about, I'll explain how the different organs influence how you think. But essentially, as half of your organs create animation in you, it drives your senses out. And as the other half of the organs that you've got pull you inside, it brings your mind back in. So your mind moves between the outer and the inner. Okay, so the next thing we're going to look at is where some of the voices actually come from in your head. So let's scoot back for a little while um, to maybe when you were first born. Now when you were first born, you would have had direct sensory experience of things without creating the language. Now this is really important if you're someone who overthinks a lot. I said if you go back and just reflect for a moment, obviously you probably can't remember the exact experiences, but even if you reflect on this as an idea, that when you're first born, because you don't have a language center evolved in your brain, you would have direct experience of sight, sound, taste, touch and smell, and direct experience of the signals inside your body. So if you were feeling hungry, you would just feel hungry without being able to create the words, I am hungry. If you're lying in your cot or pram and there's a tiny toy that's got stuck underneath your shoulder and it's irritating you, you would just feel irritated 
without being able to create the words I am irritated or I am angry or I am annoyed. Now over time as your loving folks will teach you language and your tutors and you become educated and the language centres evolve in your brain, you will then start to create language which fits to the experience that you're having both from the outside, from the sight, sound, taste, touch and smell, and from the inside. So, when you're feeling hungry, you've learnt the word hungry, the sensation of hunger starts to associate to that word. So you then start to think, I am hungry. Maybe next time you roll over onto that little toy that's caught up underneath your shoulder, and then you start to think, oh, I am angry. So the essential point here is that the words and images that you hear in your mind are associated to sensations that you feel through the body. That's how language comes about. What can start to happen though sometimes is that the language that we hear in our mind becomes inappropriate or not directly proportionate to the actual momentary experience. So what I mean by that is when you feel hungry in the moment your mind creates the language of it fine. When you roll over onto that little toy, it starts to hurt you, your mind starts to think, that's painful, I don't like it. But when we start to develop chronic imbalances in the body, so let's say for whatever reason your stomach's a little bit out of balance, you start to feel chronically hungry, so then you start to create chronic narrative and chronic thoughts in your mind of always feeling dissatisfied. And these kind of patterns happen through all the different organs. So let's have a look at which organs create which kinds of language in your mind. Okay, so here we have another chart where we're going to look at some of the different voices that are created in the mind through different organs inside us. So let's break this down a little bit again because this might be a slightly unusual concept for you to get your head around. But essentially, a lot of the voices that you hear in your head, not all of them, but a lot of them, come directly in the moment from direct input of what organs are kind of in energetic ascendancy inside of you. So again, obvious example, you feel hungry, you recognise that your stomach's talking to you, you create the language, I am hungry. Someone comes along, says something nasty to you, you find a, a contraction, your heart feels a little bit offended, you think, oh, I'm, you know, my heart's closed to that person now, and then you think thoughts that are to do with being closed. Now, what happens in your body, again, following our principles of simplistic nature, is your body moves between the ascendancy of different organs in order to keep your whole balance. So, easiest example or easiest analogy to look at with that is with the seasons. So, if we think of the seasons, We've got distinct seasons with different qualities, but they all form together to create a balanced whole. Similarly, your mind, external senses, move between sight, sound, taste, touch and smell to keep us generally balanced. So again, we've got this general principle that in order to keep a whole balance, there's lots of different phases that go on. Now in Chinese medicine we actually work with the idea we've got five seasons. We add in this little season in the middle of late summer. So today we work with the idea that we've got spring, summer, late summer, autumn and then winter. So within any one cycle of energy, in any one life cycle, you've got these five different phases. And that's similar to how we're going to see how it operates in the body. So we work with the fact you've got five elements within the body that have got different organs in them. And at any one time, just like the seasons, these different elements arise in the body in order to keep you balanced. And as those organs become stimulated, again, they create language in your mind. So just as your stomach rumbles and you think, oh, I'm hungry, the other organs all similarly come with a different voice. Now, if you don't believe this and you think it's too simplistic, just think about times when maybe you've gone out, you might have had a little bit too much to drink, your liver feels a bit irritated the next day, and you create an entire narrative. You know, I feel, oh, I'm a bit angry today. You think angry thoughts, you feel a bit angry. You know, you get an entire change of mind related to what goes on in the body. You know, similar when we just feel ill. Sometimes, you know, different sensations happen in the body, changes the narrative in your mind. 
let's have a look what we've got. So, your liver and gallbladder comprise your wood element. So your wood element, if you like, if we're using our seasonal analogy, is the part of you which creates growth and structure just like spring. So if you think of the nature of spring, spring is the phase within you, or spring is the phase, which enables things to grow, create structure and direction and vision for what's going to be built in the future. So when your liver and gallbladder are strongly activated or in the ascendancy in your body, in your mind, you experience the liver and gallbladder creating plans, decisions, creating vision for the future. Now, the mind always operates on a spectrum with different elements. So different organs can be either in a state of excess or deficiency, which alters a little bit of the voice that we have. So if you've got a particularly strong wood element, as your liver and gallbladder comes into ascendancy, you will find yourself thinking like quite rigid thoughts of this has to be this way, this is how it's gonna be, very clear vision, and a real strong ability to assert yourself through the body. Because similarly in Chinese medicine, as the mind becomes activated, there's a, there's a relationship from the body to the mind, so it also becomes through with a volition, a kind of a behavioral type, if you like. So, Strong wood element, strong vision, liver and gallbladder, very good. If your liver and gallbladder energy is at the other end of the spectrum, then actually you might struggle to create plans and decisions. So you, that voice you hear in your mind that's associated to what you're going to do in the future, where you're going to go, you might not hear it or it might come across as very timid, it might be very unclear, and you might lack vision for the future. Okay. When your fire element of your heart and heart functions talk to you, again, slightly more obvious one, it's to do with thoughts, to do with connection, passion, joy and intimacy. So again, if you've got a very abundant fire element, as you were to sit and observe yourself, you would have all these different thoughts about lots of warm connection, lots of passion, lots of joy, lots of things that you want to move towards and embrace, not just embrace physically, but things you want to embrace in your life. Whereas if your fire elements at the other end of the spectrum, you might have lots of thoughts that to do with feeling disconnected, feeling lonely, feeling a lack of passion, a lack of joy. Okay, so next element, spleen and stomach. We've touched on the voice of the stomach, or one of its voices, that when it's activated strongly in the body, you might feel hungry. So yes, it's true that a lot of the other voices associated with this earth element of spleen and stomach are also around that same type of theme of your body's basic needs. So it's lots of thoughts around what you want to eat, how you want to make yourself comfortable, your kind of nest, your basic needs, your ability to empathise with other people. So when you're very much in tune with your own basic needs, you find it very easy to reach out to other people and understand them. Whereas if your earth elements at the other end of the spectrum, you might have thoughts where you feel a little bit dissatisfied, you know, you lack that abundancy. You might feel it difficult to digest things that are going on around you in your life. You might feel generally uncomfortable. You might struggle to build a nest and feel comfortable on the earth in different places where you live. And you also might feel like you can't really relate to other people's experience very much. If we're not very good at relating to our own body and basic needs, we tend to find it a little bit difficult to relate to other people's too. Okay, your metal elements, your lung and large intestines also speak to you. So when your lungs are in the ascendancy within the body, you tend to hear lots of voices in your head to do with things that you're inspired about. Things that, you know, it's, it's a bit like fanning the flames. So when you've got a fire and you throw a bit of air on top of it, you know, you get all these kind of inspired thoughts because it's fanning the flames of your passions because your lungs sit next to your heart. So inspired thoughts tend to come from the lungs. Or if your lungs are at the other end of the spectrum, you might find yourself feeling like you're carrying a lot of weight with you in the sense of grief. So if you think of these two things, the very opposite ways of working. So th this sense of inspiration with this air movement cleanly through the lungs, as opposed to feeling this heavy sense of grief on the chest. You know, so again, 
lungs to do with inspirational grief. And the large intestine's got a slightly different dynamic in that the large intestine's to do with getting rid of things. So in the same way we can see the large intestine in the body is to do with getting rid of your waste. So in the mind it's the same function. So when you're thinking of things that you need to throw away and get rid of, that's the natural energy of your large intestine inside coming into ascendancy and talking to you. So again, depending on what end of the spectrum you are, you might be someone who collects a lot of waste around them, or you might be someone who can also be excessively clean. So when we're in balance, we're somewhere between those two things. And it's interesting to note that in our everyday language, we often say people who are excessively clean, we often call them anal. You know, so it's somewhere in there we've kind of figured out this relationship between the organs and some of our behaviours and thought traits. Um, also important to mention that all these different organs, as well as coming under different thought forms, they do come with different behaviours. So again, really good example of that with a large intestine imbalance, is if, if inside your body it's imbalanced and you're kind of collecting waste, you also tend to collect a lot of waste around you. So people who've got a lot of clutter around them, a lot of clutter in the mind. Again, that's a, a symptom, if you like, of the large intestine being out of balance. Okay, so when your kidney and bladder talk to you inside your body, it's a bit like the polar opposite of the liver and gallbladder. So while the liver and gallbladder are all about thinking about the future and what you wanna create in your life, your kidney and bladder are thoughts to do with the past. And this is because the fluids in your body absorb the vibration and the essence of experiences that you've been involved in. So if you want to go out there and research this, I suggest getting a book called Dr. Emoto's Messages from Water. And he explains in it how the fluids in your body take on the vibration of what you've been exposed to. If you want to go out and explore this in a more just experiential way, then think about what happens when you've been exposed to really strong vibration. Think about going to a concert, lots of loud music hitting your body. And then when you remove yourself from that situation, you go and lie down, you go and sit down somewhere, your body is still buffeted with that same sound, that same vibration, which creates the thoughts still in your mind of the music, you hear snippets of the different songs, different music that you've heard. And so it's exactly the same and through our everyday experiences. So things that we're exposed to create an impression on the fluids of the body and as the kidney and bladder are working through these to sort them and filter them out, we experience the reflection of that experience in our mind. And it's, you know, sometimes you can see it because things happen in our life and we often say, look, I just need to go away and reflect on this. So you might have been hit with an unexpected situation and unexpected vibration sometimes it happens when people say things to us and we weren't quite expecting it it kind of comes in doo -doo 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 -doo, hits the body creates an impression we have to go away and filter it through and sort it out so when you're thinking things to do with the past that's your kidney and bladder talking to you okay so again i know it's not the easiest thing to get your head around but just go away and have a little bit of a think about it your mind moves between these different phases. So if you were to sit down and do a little exercise, which I'll explain in a moment, to observe in your own mind, depending on what state you're in right now, different ones of these organs might talk to you more so. So obviously we have times when these different organs are more acutely called into action. So let's say you've got a lot of work to do, you've got a lot of planning and decision making to do then your liver and gallbladder has got a lot of extra work to do, so you tend to think a lot more thoughts through planning and decision making. Let's say you know, you've met someone in your life who you feel a lot of love for, your heart obviously comes into the ascendancy at that time, so you think a lot more thoughts to do with love and passion because your heart energy is a bit more open and expanded. When you're feeling hungry, evidently we can see how that creates in the mind this overriding feeling, oh, I need to eat right now. Um, you know, at times when you need to clean up the stuff around you, you walk into your house, it's a real mess. Then, you know, lung and large intestine come into play, clearing out away the old waste, get inspired for how you want to create a new space in front of you. And then obviously as well, when a lot of things have happened to us, you know, the kidney and bladder really comes in because it wants to reflect on things. 
So you can sit down at different times of the day and you can observe your own mind and see which of these organs is talking to you more at different times. So if you're relatively well balanced, you'll probably sit down, do this kind of self-awareness exercise and hear all the different voices chipping in with different bits of little bits of information that you need. You know, so quite often I sit and observe my mind. I can observe the bit of me, my wood elements, thinking, oh, oh yeah, tomorrow I need to finish off this bit of work, blah, blah, blah. I might think a little bit about someone who's in my life at the moment. I might think about what I'm going to cook for my dinner later. I might be thinking fresh ideas for my business or stuff I need to clear away. And then I might be busy generating wisdom through thinking about things that have happened in the past. Now, why this information is really important is because once you get to know these internal elements, it gives you vital information as to sometimes whether something outside of you is out of balance or whether it's you out of balance. For example, if in your life, the plate of your life in front of you is presented beautifully, there's tons of abundant things happening for you, you've got great food, you live in a great place, you know, it's all nice and abundant and full. If you still always consistently get this voice that it's never enough, it starts to tell you really there's not much point in tinkering your life outside. It can actually be the organs inside that are out of balance. If your life is full of beautiful people and lots of love, but yet the voice inside your head tells you it doesn't feel like it's warm, you don't feel like you can embrace it and you're still feeling lonely or disconnected, that can also give you a clue that actually the imbalance is within. If in your life you're constantly planning the next thing that you want to do all the time before you finish the last thing, liver and gallbladder could be out of balance, your wood element. If every time you come in the house it's full of junk everywhere, you've got 10 years worth of diaries that you can't bear to throw away, um, you know, lots of clutter, you're carrying all these old experiences in your mind can be an issue with the metal element you know and if you don't spend enough time reflecting on things and you keep making the same mistakes over and over again or carrying fear because fear is on the cycle on the spectrum of the water elements you either recklessly go out and keep doing things or you sometimes sit a little bit too far inside yourself again it can be an issue that's generated from within the body so this is vital information so we can figure out whether the imbalance is around us or within us. Just in the same way you might be conscious that any of your external senses aren't so strong. You know, sometimes we're aware that maybe it's our eyesight that isn't very good. Not so much that the problem with the thing we're looking at, we just come to terms with actually, you know what, my eyes aren't that good. Or, you know, sometimes my hearing isn't that good. It's not the fault of the volume of uh, what I'm engaging with. You understand it's one of your own senses that's the problem. So it's really important to get to know these voices. So right, we're going to do two exercises where you can start to observe some of these different patterns that are happening in you right now. So the first one we're going to look at is this pattern of yin and yang. We're going to observe our own mind and how it moves between the outside and the inside. Okay, so I'm going to talk you into an exercise. The first exercise we're going to do is observing this outward and inward movement of the mind between sight, sound, taste, touch and smell, and then back to our internal senses of what's happening inside the body. So you want to be sitting yourself down, nice and comfortable. So if you've got a more scientific mind, we'll call this a self-observation exercise, or if you're a little bit more comfortable with Eastern philosophy, if you like, we can call it a meditation. So you want to have a nice straight spine so the organs in the body don't feel distressed. And we're going to choose an external sense to focus on because when we focus on an external sense we can then become aware of when the mind draws us away from that external sense into the interior and then see how the mind naturally comes back to the external sense again. So the first one we're going to do is we're going to use the sensation of touch. So about two finger widths beneath your belly button, just press there for a moment with your hand. And then just feel the connection of your clothing resting on that part of your body. So usually around where the waistband 
of your trousers are, dress, leggings, whatever you're wearing. So where the waistband is of your trousers, leggings, dress. So just feel the sensation of your clothing resting on that part of your body. So we're using the sensation of touch. And just start to follow with your mind this sensation of touch against the surface of the skin. You just notice how you can only follow it for a little while before your mind naturally drifts inside into thoughts. And then now the mind naturally returns back to the surface. I'm going to do this around five minutes. Keep reaffirming your connection to the sensation of touch when your mind's in a state of alertness. Again, just notice how the mind then drifts inside. So we're going to change the sensory anchor to sound. So just be aware of the sounds that are going on around you. But again, just notice how the mind naturally pulls you back inside to the dialogue that's generated from within the body. Or return into the sound again. Right, and then just allow your awareness to be turned back to the outside. So hopefully that should have been long enough for you to be able to be conscious again how you'd be in the external senses for a little while. And then before you know it, you're drifting around in your own thoughts. And obviously depending on what time of day you do this exercise, it can also dictate a little bit of, of, um, of where your mind is if you like. So you do that kind of exercise first thing in the morning when the mind is naturally more alert then we tend to be naturally more conscious with our external senses. We do it last thing at night, then obviously we tend to be much more internalised. You know, and eventually obviously we fall asleep, you know, which is the maximum kind of yin state that we get into. Okay, so that's one exercise. What we're also going to do is now we're going to go back into a similar process, but this time you're actually going to observe what some of the internal narrative actually is that you experience. So when your mind goes back inside and you hear your mind start to chat away, you can actually start to track what it is so we can work out which organ's talking to you. 
So if when you start to relax and you go in, you realise that you're thinking about things you need to get done, comes from the wood element. If you're thinking about people you care about, things you're passionate about, it'll be your fire. If you're thinking about your basic needs, meeting the needs of your body, what you need to eat, your nest, earth element. If you're thinking about things you can't wait to get done, feeling inspired, new fresh ideas coming in, or things you need to clear up, it'll be your metal element talking to you. Or if you reflect on things from the past, it'll be your water element talking to you. So again, we're just going to sit for a few minutes. I just encourage you just to watch the dance of the different elements. So you might get a lot of one or two elements, or you might be able to hear all of them talking to you. So again, just let your attention rest inside. Just bring your attention back again to that point just underneath your belly button. So keep the discipline of keep reaffirming your awareness back to that point beneath the belly button. You'll notice the mind naturally drifts inside. And then when your attention returns back to the surface, just make a little mental note of what you're actually thinking about. And keep reaffirming your discipline to bring the attention back to the sensation of touch so that then you can catch the awareness of what you were thinking about. Great, and then just let your attention return back again to the exterior. So you might want to jot down some of the themes, the trains of thoughts that you had. The longer you do the exercise for, then obviously the clearer you become about some of the different themes. If you do the exercise on different days, you might get different things coming up. So I've spent a lot of time thinking about editing this later on so I was thinking I was making the plans okay I've got this and that with time I need to get off and do that I was thinking about someone I need to go and meet later so that was to do my fire it's not long since I had my lunch so I also had a bit of that floating around in me thinking about my earth um, and then just a little bit of reflection on some things that happened earlier today as well didn't really get too much of my lungs and large intestine speaking to me at this time you know so it just depends where your mind is at any one time Okay, so that's your organs talking to you directly in the moment and giving you information that you need right now. 
going to look at another couple of secondary levels or other levels of what we also experience in the mind. So as well as that direct chatter right now, giving you information, there's also sometimes a whole lot of background noise, repetitive thoughts and repeated sort of um, experiences that also bounce around in us in a much more chronic way. So in much the same way I was explaining earlier, that the water in the body takes on and absorbs the vibration of what it's been exposed to. So the body as a whole does that. And if things don't really get processed out, that also becomes part of who we are. So in the same way as the organs directly talk to us and are giving off signals all the time. So if you're in a situation for a long period of time, you tend to absorb the qualities and textures of that situation literally into the soft tissue of the body which also then comes back as repeated thoughts in your mind so an extreme example of this obviously if we've sometimes maybe experienced a trauma that's had a real severe impact on the body that can kind of bounce around in there for a long time but also it's more to do with just the chronic exposure to certain situations just generally build up in there and can become a feature of the mind, which if we're not careful, can really hold us back. So let's say year after year after year, you've walked into a job you don't particularly want to be in, then the atmosphere in there is, you know, not good. You're exposed to that. And whether you kind of like it or not, it kind of starts to soak into you, the quality of that feeling, the quality of that experience. And unless you manage to process it back out the body, which is obviously where therapies come in, yoga, movement, dance, it actually kind of becomes part of who you are and can create this kind of background noise. And when we're much younger, you know, a lot of our early experiences can kind of really soak into us in that way. So we kind of carry the essence and the feel and the vibration of what we've been exposed to in our life. Now, if something particularly traumatic has happened, or if over a period of time we're exposed to something chronic we don't like, that can also cause us to lock up certain parts of the body to try and keep things pushed down into our subconscious. You know, so again, sometimes things happen all of a sudden, the body freezes and locks, and then we can end up getting different fatigue symptoms because we either don't feel comfortable enough in order to open the body back up to allow what it is that happened to us to pass back through or just the fact of holding that amount of tension in the body also starts to deplete the body. Um, you know, so we can also experience as the background noise, the kind of echo of things that we've experienced in the past. Okay, now the last thing we're gonna look at, taking things out to a much more esoteric perspective, is if you can sit and observe all the different parts of you. So my premise to you is that you can sit and observe sight, sound, taste, touch and smell, and you can observe the organs talking to you inside the body. So you can observe the organs talking to you in the body in the same way as you can observe your own foot, your own leg, your own arm. Then that dictates really that you are not your mind. It dictates that you have got a separate watcher, a separate aspect of you that's got the ability to witness yourself. It really begs the question, who or what are you in essence? So my particular take on that is when you move into that witness role, when you really withdraw um, and manage to witness yourself, you're actually sitting in the vantage point of your own soul. If you've got a different take on what you think that is, fair enough, you go for that. But certainly from my perspective, you're having a soulful moment when you're in a moment of insight and witnessing yourself. I hope that's useful, folks. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.